the wait is over. South Carolina's non-conference schedule has been released and it's pretty competitive. And while it could lead to a bunch of losses for the Gamecocks, it could just be the battle test of schedule that South Carolina needs to be ready to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. Let's talk about it. What is up awesome people of the internet? Last year, the Gamecocks had a phenomenal season going 36 and one, only losing in the final four to Iowa. And after the season was over, they lost all five starters to the WNBA draft. They entered the season with a brand new starting lineup and even with significant personnel losses, Dawn Staley has rebuilt this team. She added in some transfers to Hina Pow Pow and to Kima Walker. Uh, she got in some really good freshmen, uh, but it's not all brand new for the Gamecocks. They return Camila Cardoso, who is really going to have to carry the low down low for the team. And they also have uh, on the guard spot, Raven Johnson and Bree Hall, who I think are gonna have critical roles in order for this team to actually make it far. Um, they're gonna have to step up and I think they will step up and have, have really good years this year. All right, so with that being said, let's talk about this non-conference schedule. Uh, so South Carolina's 13 game slate features nine teams who made it to the NCAA tournament last season, as well as four teams uh, who were in the Sweet 16. So again, pretty competitive. South Carolina's season will start off with a historic matchup against Notre Dame in Paris on November the 6th. And this marks the first ever NCAA regular season game played in Paris. So this is a big deal. And I would say the NCAA did a very good job at selecting both of these teams. Um, you know, uh, South Carolina is a team that people watch for. Like they're, they're a big name. Don Staley is a big personality. Um, and you know, it's, it's smart for the NCAA to pick South Carolina and also to pick, um, Notre Dame, uh, knowing that Olivia miles, uh, again, is big time as well. Um, and I just think this is going to be a very, very fun game. Uh, so November the 6th, this game is going to be on ESPN. So if y'all, uh, are not planning to watch this game live DVR it so you can watch it later. It's going to be a good game. Um, this is the first game in Paris, as I said, so like, this is a big deal. Um, and I know uh, both teams are going to put on a show for their European fans, for sure. Uh, last season, uh, Notre Dame had a record of 27 and six, uh, and they play in the ACC for basketball. Uh, and remember, Olivia Miles is back. Uh, so again, this is gonna be a fun game. Um, I don't have a prediction of who I think will win. Um, Maybe South Carolina wins, maybe North Carolina, uh, maybe North Carolina, <laughs> maybe uh, Notre Dame wins. Uh, but I just know we're going to watch some really good basketball. We're going to watch some competitive basketball. Um, and I am, I'm down for it. So again, ESPN, make sure y'all check that out. Uh, November the 6th. After that, uh, the South Carolina Gamecocks return to the U.S. Uh, to host Maryland on November the 12th. This is a rematch of the 2023 Elite Eight game that South Carolina won 86 to 75. Uh, last season, the Terps were 28 and seven and they play in the Big 10. I do expect South Carolina to have the edge on this game, uh, but I do think it will be close. Um, while, though, you know, South Carolina will likely will win. Uh, this game will be available on ABC, um, so that's a notable thing. Also, uh, one thing that I thought was kind of cool to mention, um, at this game in particular, uh, South Carolina will retire the jersey of former Gamecock and current Minnesota Lynx player, Tiffany Mitchell. So shout out to Tiffany Mitchell for having uh, her jersey get retired. Like to me, that's a huge deal, um, having your jersey retired uh, from your alma mater. Um, very exciting. And um, Tiffany Mitchell, when she was in South Carolina, she was very good, <laughs> so so uh, this is very, very well deserved. I don't know if they're gonna um, capture some of that um, uh, Jersey retirement on ABC, uh, but for those who are in person um, in South Carolina, you all might wanna go to this game to watch uh, Tiffany Mitchell get her Jersey retired. On November the 16th, South Carolina plays Clemson. Um, in this game, uh, they should for sure win it. Um, Clemson plays in the ACC, and last season they had a record of 19 and 16. On November the 20th, South Carolina plays South Dakota State. Uh, last year, these two teams played against each other and South Carolina won um, 62 to 44. Uh, this year's score will likely be very similar. 
The Jackrabbits play in the Big 12, and last year they had a record of 29 and six. And for the Gamecocks final game in their four game homestand on November the 24th, they play Mississippi Valley State. Uh, Mississippi Valley State is, is not a very good team. Uh, last year they lost to everybody um, from South Carolina to Mississippi State to Jackson State. They, they've lost a lot of games. Uh, they play in the SWAC and last season they had a record of, tw of two and 27. So um, they're gonna get blown out the water. Uh, for this game, um, but, but yeah, shout out to uh, Don Staley for for choosing uh, to play some HBCUs. Um, the Gamecocks uh, then head on the road after that game to North Carolina on November the 30th uh, for a ACC SEC challenge game. Um, if you don't know what that challenge, what like what challenge games are, I would recommend you go to my Tennessee video um, and check that out because I give an explainer as to what the ACC SEC challenge game is. It's basically a partnership between the ACC, SEC and ESPN to make some money and draw uh, more attention to regular games. Um, bring a little bit more excitement, I would say, to it. Uh, anyway, uh, that should be a very good game, uh, but I do think South Carolina will come out on top. Uh, last year, the Tar Heels had a record of 22 and 11, and of course they play in the ACC. Uh, the Gamecocks uh, decide to stay in the area and head over to Duke on December the 3rd uh, to play in the Jimmy V Classic. Um, every year, I, I love watching the Jimmy V Classic games. Um, you know, is the Jimmy V Classic games and the K, K Yao games, um, I just love every year. Uh, last year, uh, Duke was 26 and seven, and they play in the ACC. Um, so I think, uh, you know, it's most likely uh, South Carolina will will win this game. All right, moving on. On December the sixth, uh, South Carolina goes home to play Morgan State. Um, and once again, while making these videos, um, I have come across a team that I had never heard of. Uh, so. That's kind of one of the positives of this series, kind of getting to know uh, some other schools that I've never heard of. Well, um, if you've never heard of Morgan State, here's a little bit about them. Uh, they are HBCU uh, in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, they play in the MEAC, and last season they had a record of 17 and 12. Uh, it's likely that um, South Carolina will win this game, although I have personally never seen Morgan State play, so I I don't have any, anything to really share on that front. <laughs> uh, but likely, very much likely, uh, South Carolina will, will, will beat them. Um, on December the 10th, South Carolina heads up to Unkinsville, uh, Connecticut, to play in the Basketball Hall of Fame Women's Showcase against Utah. Um, and just FYI, uh, this showcase also features UConn versus North Carolina and Florida State versus UCLA. Um, now, the game against Utah should be a good game. Utah plays in the Pac-12, uh, for now at least. Um, and last year, they had a record of 27 and five. Um, they are a very good team. Remember, they almost beat LSU in the NCAA tournament. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Utes came out on top with the victory. Um, so it's gonna be a very close game. You know, I wouldn't give a firm prediction of who's gonna win, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if uh, South Carolina beat uh, uh, beat Utah, and I wouldn't be surprised if Utah beat South Carolina. Uh, but good game. Um, I'm not sure exactly if that game is going to be on, on TV. Hopefully it is, uh, because it's going to be a one, good one. All right. Uh, on December the 16th, South Carolina plays their last home game of the year against Presbyterian. Uh, Presbyterian plays in, in the Big South, um, and last year they had a record of 13 and 17. And on December the 19th, uh, the Gamecocks go on the road uh, to Ohio to play Bowling Green. Uh, last year, Bowling Green had a record of 30, 31 and seven. Uh, they play in the MAC conference. Um, and so again, another game, probably likely another game that South Carolina should win. Um, and to finish out uh, the 2023 season, um, South Carolina plays East Carolina. East Carolina plays in the American Conference, uh, and last year they had a record of 23 and 10. All right, I wanted to speed through those to get to the main event this year. Uh, this is gonna be uh, South Carolina's final non-conference game of the year, uh, which is against UConn on February 11th. 
Uh, now this ga this game, guys, this is gonna be a game. Uh, the Gamecocks have met uh, UConn annually during the regular season since 2015. Um, and the teams have faced off twice in the NCAA tournament since then. Uh, South Carolina has won the last three matchups versus UConn. Uh, but uh, UConn leads the all-time series uh, 9 to 4 um, This game is going to be a super, super fun game to watch. Who do y'all got winning this game? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Um, I have um, South Carolina taking the edge over UConn in this game. And uh, the reason why I say that is because if you just look at the way South Carolina has structured their games, it's it's sort of tough to, to start off with. Um, and I think while South Carolina may have some some losses earlier on to like maybe maybe uh, uh, um, Notre Dame and, and maybe Utah and whatnot, um, I think by the time we get to this final um, non-conference game against UConn, I think this team is going to be battle tested and they're going to be ready to go. Um, Don Staley is going to coach this team up um, and we're going to see a, a different um, South Carolina Gamecocks team than what we saw early in the season and what we, what we likely will see early in the season. So I think uh, South Carolina is going to be ready for this game. I do think they take the edge over um, UConn. Yeah, maybe UConn wins, but I, I as of right now, I, I would put... Um, I would, I would say that South Carolina, I think is gonna have it. But uh, do y'all disagree with me? Let me know in the comments uh, what y'all think about that prediction. Uh, will I be massively wrong? Or will I be right? I don't know, time will tell, uh, but we can at least uh, guesstimate and kind of have fun in the comments uh, discussing what we think uh, could possibly happen in this game. Uh, but for sure, this to me is um, one of the games of the year. Um, and something that uh, I think just about everybody uh, that, that call themselves a women's basketball fan should be setting their DVR for um, and, and, and ready to watch this game. Um, all right, so there you have it. Uh, that was the full slate of non-conference games. And as I mentioned at the top, this is a pretty competitive uh, list of, of games. Uh, you have uh, the Notre Dame game, you have the Maryland game, you have the UConn game, you have the Utah game. Um, all those games to me are, you know, must see games to watch this season. Um, and in terms of, and in terms of predictions, um, I think it's possible that we see South Carolina, uh, lose possibly to Notre Dame, lose possibly to Maryland, possibly to, to, to Utah, um, and also possibly to UConn. Uh, while they may lose those games, I, I see it possible that they could also win <laughs> all those games. Uh, but one thing to note uh, that is just an interesting thing that I noticed. Um, I don't know what to think about it, but you know, uh, South Carolina is playing two HBCUs this season. They're playing Morgan State and they're playing Mississippi Valley State, um, which is interesting. LSU is also playing a couple of HBCUs as well. They're, they're playing Mississippi Valley State and they're playing Coppin. Um, just an interesting observation. Um, I don't really have a thought behind it other than it's interesting. Um, I, I like the fact that they're playing, um, HBCUs, uh, just because it just, I think it gives a little bit more visibility to, uh, the women's basketball programs, at HBCUs, um, though these HBCUs that they're going to play, they're going to of course dominate and destroy them. Um, I don't know. I just think, I think it's, it's, uh, cool that they're playing them. Um, if y'all have a, uh, thought about, uh, uh, South Carolina and also uh, LSU playing HBCUs. Let me know. Let me know in the comments uh, if if you guys read further into it. I just think it's it's interesting um, and it's 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 cool that they're playing them. But uh, I wish the, the HBCUs uh, that they were playing were a little bit more competitive. But you know, um, I I appreciate that they're giving them a look. All right, so we are wrapping up this video. But before we do, um, just want to let you all know that. Um, I will be doing a more detailed look at South Carolina, um, looking at who they brought in and their overall roster coming up um, in a separate video for sure. Um, but one thing I just wanna say is uh, if you have paid any attention to women's college basketball, um, you know to never count Don Staley out as a coach. Uh, she is a great strategy uh, person and, and, and coach, um, regardless of, uh, of what publications tell you otherwise, uh, Don Staley is an amazing coaching mind. Um, 
and she instills that 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 sort of thinking about uh, the game into her players. And so, uh, this looking at this non-conference schedule, you know, this team is going to be battle tested. Uh, they're going to be battle tested early on. You have, you know, uh, Notre Dame to start off the season, and you have uh, South Carolina to end to end non-conference play. Um, so, so tough teams to play against, and it's smart that Don Staley did this. Um, and I think that she did it because she wants to make sure her her, her girls are ready, uh, that they're ready for the NCAA tournament when it comes. Um, because you know, while South Carolina lost a lot of players. Um, they have players who are, who are already there who, who can, who can um, who, who I think are going to step up this year. They brought in some new players, um, both the transfer market and, and freshmen. And so I think it's going to be a fun time to watch South Carolina. Um, yeah. So, uh, but again, I will have a very uh, specific video about South Carolina and the roster coming up. So stay tuned for that. Um, anyway, guys, that is the video. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Uh, let me know your thoughts on South Carolina's non-conference schedule. Um, how many games do you think they will lose and how many games overall do you think they will win? Um, and let me know, uh, what you think about how the season will go for South Carolina. Um, yeah, we look, we know they lost a lot of players. Um, and I think, uh, I think they'll still be extremely competitive and they will still um, dominate in, in several games this, this year and, and um, just overall be very competitive. But we'll kind of see how it goes, but let me know if y'all have predictions in the comments below. All right, guys, if you haven't liked this video, please like it, um, if you liked it. If you didn't like it, uh, let me know in the comments why you didn't like it. And I, you know, I, love, I love your feedback, so let me know why if you didn't like it. But if you did like it, uh, please actually click the like button. Um, if you haven't subscribed to, th to this channel, um, I ask that you please subscribe. Um, my channel is, is, my goal is to make a community, is to sort of gather a community of, of women's basketball fans on, uh, on YouTube to discuss what's going on in the world of women's basketball. I know um, that I, I uh, don't do as great of job of, of, of uh, covering a vast amount of, um, of teams and, and, and whatnot. And I, I'm trying uh, to make sure I cover uh, it, you know, some of the bigger teams as well as uh, some of the smaller teams. I know I haven't done much on that front, but as the season starts, um, I uh, the NCAA season starts, I want to do some sort of like show or, or something that allows me to, to talk about a bunch of teams um, as well, like including a lot of uh, teams that people don't know about um, all at once. Um, and so that, that is my goal and I am working towards that. It does require a lot of, um, a lot of preparation and a lot of like, uh, uh, uh thought to it. I think I'm, I think it might actually be like a live show of sort of sorts. So, um, if you are interested in that, let me know in the comments. Um, that is my goal to, to try to to try to make sure that I'm talking about a whole bunch of teams. Cause when I do these sort of like produce like uh, one-off videos, it does take a lot of work. Um, and I, I love doing it the work, but I, I also know that there are a lot of teams that I'm not talking about that I want to talk about. And there's teams that I am talking about that I want to go deeper into having conversations about. And I think a live uh, show uh, would probably be able to accomplish uh, both of those things. And so, um, so yeah, I just wanted to let you all know where my head's at. Um, I, I do want to uh, be a lot more inclusive on, on, on the teams that I'm covering and whatnot. So, uh, so yeah, just know that, uh, if you're interested in, in, in joining me as I, as, as, as we sort of figure this out together, um, please subscribe to this channel. Um, thank you all so, so much for watching. If y'all made it to the end of this video, y'all some rock stars. Cause, um, I know that sometimes I, I do false, <laughs> false closes and I need to work on that. I know I need to work on that, but for sure, this is it. Thank y'all so much for watching until next time guys. Bye.